What is going on guys and gals, my name is Bryson from BCNS Games and welcome you all to Overwatch Overview, BCNS's very own series where we go through all the heroes of the Overwatch universe, going through their lore, their abilities, their ultimates, and then suggested playstyles. Now in this video we'll be covering everybody's favorite guardian angel and my favorite all time best healer, Mercy. Dr. Angela Ziegler, Overwatch call sign, Mercy. Angela was born before the beginning of the Omni Crisis. However, once the conflict did begin, young Angela would suffer the tragic loss of losing both of her parents to the Omni Forces. However, rather than seeking revenge out of the anger for the death of her parents, Dr. Ziegler would instead develop a distaste for any sort of conflict and always wanting to remain an advocate for peace, always believing that violence should only be used as a last resort and only with the need to protect others. Dr. Ziegler would go on to become the head of surgeon at a prominent Swiss hospital before pioneering a breakthrough in the field of applied nanobot technology. Her new breakthrough would radically improve the treatment of life-threatening illnesses, allowing patients with previous fatal injuries to make completely full recoveries. It was this pioneering achievement of both medical and nanobot technology that first attracted the attention of the Overwatch program. When first approached by Overwatch with the initial proposal for recruitment, Dr. Ziegler was at first hesitant. By losing both her parents to an act of war, she was opposed to Overwatch's militaristic approach in order to keep global peace. Reluctantly, she realized that Overwatch's offer allowed her the opportunity to save lives on a much larger scale than she could ever dream to do on her own. With this, she agreed to take the title of Overwatch's Head of Medical Research. Despite being a valuable asset to Overwatch's medical division, Dr. Ziegler was not at ease. Instead, she sought to increase her influence by being able to hear her allies on the front lines. This resulted in the creation of the Valkyrie Swift Response Unit. With this new combination of medical and military state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Ziegler was able to implement her nano-healing technology in order to be able to treat the critically wounded on the front lines of battle. One of the many victims saved by this new breakthrough in medical technology is actually a fellow Overwatch member, Genji. Found at the doorsteps of death and thought to be beyond saving by Dr. Ziegler, Genji was critically injured after getting into a duel with his brother Hanzo. However, thanks to the medical breakthrough of Dr. Ziegler, she was able to implement her nanobat technology to save Genji's life by completely reforming his body with a combination of cybernetics and repaired tissue. Now, during the fall of the Overwatch program, Dr. Ziegler actually claims that she foresaw this outcome. Still, becoming at odds with her superiors on the aims of the Overwatch program as a whole, she claims that she knew the program was soon due to fail. As the tension slowly grew, it eventually resulted in the conflict between two founding Overwatch members, John Morrison and Gabriel Reyes. Ziegler admitted that the outcome had been inevitable. They had drifted further and further apart ever since Morrison had been chosen over Reyes for the position of Strike Team Commander. After these two founding members of the Overwatch program came to blows and the dust settled, both were presumed MIA. With no one left to take charge of the Overwatch program, the program was eventually shut down, all of its members disbanded, and the program itself left for ruin. After the dissolvement of the Overwatch program, Ziegler dedicated herself to helping those affected by the war. Though now she spends most of her time caring for the broken and disposed in crisis areas all around the world, Dr. Ziegler can still be seen donning her Valkyrie student armor whenever the innocents are imperiled. She claims she does this in order to promote her noble goal of making the world a more peaceful place. Now let's take a look at the Mercy's kit and see what all she has to work with. Now Mercy's primary weapon is her Caduceus' staff. Trust me, it's a lot easier to use this thing than it is to try to say its name. Basically, the way it works is Mercy can choose to engage one of two beams on an ally hero. By maintaining the beam, she can either choose to restore an ally's health or increase the amount of damage they're able to deal. Now, using the staff itself is very simple. The staff will lock on and track whoever you have your current target as. Meaning, if you have a hero who you're currently healing and or giving them a damage buff, as long as you don't let up on the trigger, no matter how much they move, sway, throw whatever kind of juke moves at your enemies, the beam will constantly heal them. But let's say something goes on that causes you and the ally champion you're currently giving a buff to to be separated either by a long distance or by a wall. Well, the beam does give you some leniency. Say if an ally champion you're currently giving a buff to travels between a wall or has to move somewhere where there is a barrier separating you, the beam will temporarily become transparent for about two seconds allowing you to continuously give them the buff while they're doing whatever they're trying to do. Now one cool trait about the staff is actually the fact that once you make a connection with an ally hero, you no longer need to maintain line of sight in order to keep giving them the buff. This means you can use this cool aspect to your advantage by constantly checking behind you and your ally champion to make sure you're not going to get flanked by anyone like a reaper or a tracer. Mercy's secondary weapon is her Caduceus Blaster. Just like her primary weapon, it's harder to say the name of this weapon than it is to actually use it. 
Her secondary weapon is a 20 shot sidearm pistol, though the weapon itself is nothing to sneeze at. While fairly weak at long range due to the ease at which you can dodge the projectiles, the Caduceus Blaster can be deadly at close range, especially if a player is able to land headshots with the bullets. Combine this with the fact that the pistol actually gives the player perfect accuracy and the Caduceus Blaster can be used as a safety kill weapon for any kind of annoying long range targets such as a Torbjorn Turret, a Bastion, or even an unlucky sniper. But sometimes a pistol can be even resourceful whenever you need to do that extra little bit of damage to help out an enemy hero to be able to secure a kill. That's why even though Mercy's primary goal is that of a support healer, don't believe she's going to go down without a fight. Now Mercy's next ability is actually named after her keepsake, Guardian Angel. When activated, Mercy will fly towards a target ally whether they are alive or dead. The ability auto targets the closest ally champion closest to Mercy if she's not already tethered to a teammate. However, when she is tethered, the ability takes priority to whatever hero Mercy is currently buffing, meaning that this ability can be used to escape a situation when things are going bad very quickly. Say you're taking damage from an unknown location, you can quickly use Guardian Angel to dash to your allied champion, allowing him to save you and removing you from a bad situation. Now you can cancel Guardian Angel's ability by just pressing the hotkey button once again. This is a great way to be able to quickly decide that an area you once thought was a safe place to dash to might not be as safe as you first thought. Now something unique about Mercy that she doesn't share with a lot of other heroes is actually the fact that she possesses a passive. The passive is Angelic Descent. The passive is actually a result of Mercy wearing her Valkyrie suit. The suit allows Mercy that whenever coming down from a high height, rather than dropping like most heroes, instead she will slowly glide down, allowing her to position herself and being able to determine for herself what would be the best place to make her landing. However, that is not the best part of the passive. An unstated secondary benefit that is not known the most is actually the fact that after not taking damage for 3 seconds with Mercy, she will start to regenerate on health. Meaning that unlike most heroes who have to go scurrying around the map trying to find a health pack, instead all you have to do for Mercy is find somewhere safe to wait it out and you will be able to regenerate your entire health bar. Now getting to the main ability that everybody either loves or despises Mercy for, her ultimate Resurrect. When activated, Mercy will return all nearby dead allies to life. All ally heroes are brought back at full health and at whatever position they were at when they died. During revival, all allies gain a brief moment of invulnerability during which they cannot move but also cannot be hurt or affected by any abilities. Now once Mercy's ultimate does become available, the player will start seeing a count on the middle of the screen. This count will indicate how many heroes the ability will currently be able to resurrect if used. Now this is the point where a lot of Mercy players have to play Shot Caller by deciding what is the best situation to use their ult for. In some situations, it's more than worth to use the ult to only resurrect one hero, though oftentimes it may be sometimes worth allowing the one hero to remain dead, waiting on the situation in the nearby future that you may be able to resurrect if not two, but possibly even three heroes, allowing you to get more heroes back into the fight. Now that we have taken a look at Mercy's lore and all of her abilities, let's take a look at some general tips and tricks to be able to make sure you're going to get the best out of your time playing Mercy. Now let's get into how to best use Mercy's primary weapon, her Caduceus Staff. Now being a primary healer, Mercy's going to spend most of her time with this weapon in hand. And the weapon itself is very simplistic in the way it's used. One beam is going to heal the ally hero, the other one is going to give them an increased damage buff. However, the trick is, is being able to determine what time is best to be able to give an ally hero healing and what time is damage buff best needed. The trick you determine this is you have to play on the fly depending on what current hero you're currently using. Now playing with a tank, it's often to be able to determine that an ally tank is going to be able to last a lot longer in a fight rather than someone like a McCree or a Reaper. That's why usually whenever giving a heal to a tank, sometimes it's better just to give them a quick damage buff, allowing them to do that last little bit of damage to an ally hero, completely removing the damage they've been taking, and then switch over to healing. However, whenever working with someone like a McCree or a Reaper, sometimes it's best to keep constant heals on them as they combat the other enemy hero. Since their health is not generally as wide as a tank, stopping healing for even a couple seconds by switching over the damage buff may allow the other enemy team enough time to do what damage they need to do to completely drain their health. Now another tip to keep in mind whenever using Caduceus Stab is to actually not put yourself in the line of fire whenever you buff an ally hero. What I mean by this is rather than falling around an ally hero, you could instead position yourself somewhere around a corner or in a building, allowing yourself to stick the beam out of a doorway or through a window, 
allowing yourself to be able to give a buff to an ally hero without putting yourself directly in the line of fire. This means rather than an ally hero having to focus on both doing damage to the enemy team and worrying about protecting you, they can instead focus all their attention on dealing damage to the other heroes. Now another tip that can be used with Mercy is actually to stick with one of her teammates and to pocket heal a single hero. This is usually done with someone like Pharah or in my case, I do it commonly with a McCree. This means by following around a hero who has no means to be able to heal themselves, Mercy is able to completely focus on healing that character, allowing the other hero to completely focus all of their time on dealing damage to the other team and on sieging objectives. Now the biggest advice that can be given to any Mercy players out there is to know when it's best to use your ultimate ability Resurrect. As I mentioned somewhat briefly before when I talked about the ability, Sometimes it's not often worth to revive only one hero, though at other times, reviving that one ally hero may be the thing that determines the side of a fight. There really is no way to determine what is the best situation, and it's up to you to determine whether or not it's worth reviving that one hero. Though there are some elements and some aspects to take in mind to determine whether or not it's worth reviving that situation. Some of these factors are things such as, is the ally hero somebody who's essential to your team? Do they themselves currently have their ultimate available? Or do they form a core part of your team in whatever current objective your team is going after? Such as for example, if you're trying to siege an objective and the time is slowly going down and a Reinhardt goes down. While only one hero, Reinhardt plays a huge role by being able to absorb tons of damage. In that situation, it would be essential to revive the one Reinhardt, allowing him to once again stand in front of the team and block whatever damage is coming your way. With that said guys, I think this is going to wrap it up for my Mercy guy today. If you have any other extra tips or maybe any kind of playstyles that differ from my own, please let us know about them in the comment box below. i love to hear from you guys on what you believe is the best way to be able to play the Guardian Angel herself. Now if you guys have any kind of awesome Mercy play of the games and you want to see them featured on the channel in the next Overwatch overview episode, go ahead and send them to us on the email that will be in the description. And if that's not motivating enough to see your own plays on the big screen, we will be giving away a mini Winston figure to what we believe is the best Mercy play. Now if you want to see more Overwatch videos or to see more Overwatch overview guides, go ahead and check us out on the BCNS homepage. But until next time guys and gals, maybe I'll see you all out there in the Overwatch universe playing as someone's very own personal Guardian Angel.